everyone, my name is Caitlin and welcome back to my channel. So this video is one that's been requested ever since I made my Barbie ranking video forever ago and it's one that I've sort of put off making just because I wasn't that big of a Bratz fan growing up. Like, I wouldn't say that I was anti-Bratz because I do have this one memory of going over to my friend's house and playing with them and I thought that they were really cool, but I was definitely more pro-Barbie. Like, I remember this one conversation I had with my mom where she was like, they just dress too provocative and they wear too much makeup and just like the fact that they were called Bratz, she didn't think that they were very good role models. And I just remember being like, yeah, me too. But I do still think that their fashions are really interesting and their play sets are cool too and just like the phenomenon that Bratz was has me really intrigued and so I thought it was about time that I watch all the movies and rank them for you guys today and so let's do that. But before we jump right into it, first let's jump right into today's sponsor. So this video is sponsored by Audible. Audible is the go-to spot for audiobooks of all kinds. I personally have been using Audible for years so getting sponsored by them is a little bit surreal. <laughs> But Audible has just recently launched Audible Plus, which is this new monthly membership that gives you unlimited access to their Audible Plus catalog. So that includes audiobooks, podcasts, select originals, and all of that can be accessed right from the app on your phone. I just finished listening to the Folk of the Air series by Holly Black. You've probably heard of it. It's really popular in the young adult genre right now. The first book is called The Cruel Prince. But I personally was putting off getting into it for a while, and then I finally caved and got it on Audible, and then I listened to the entire series in like three days. So it is very good. I would recommend it. The ship is just top tier. It's classic enemies to lovers and so you should definitely check it out. So you can visit audible.com slash Kate Loves Disney or text Kate Loves Disney to 500 500 for your free 30-day trial. So that's audible.com slash Kate Loves Disney or you can text Kate Loves Disney to 500 500 and either way you get your free 30-day free trial. All right with all that being said let's jump right into these Bratz movies. <laughs> So at number 15, we have The Bratz Baby Save Christmas. And I just wanted to give a quick warning that like most of the Bratz Babies or the Bratz Kids movies are at the bottom of this list because I did not enjoy them. But The Bratz Baby Save Christmas is basically about the Bratz. Actually, no, it's not even really about the Bratz. It's about this guy who poses as mall Santa while his elves steal the parents' wallets. So it's basically like bad Santa, but for kids. And so the Bratz Babies are at the mall and they overhear this guy say that he doesn't think that he'll be able to get the job done this year. And so naturally they think that that means that he can't do Christmas this year and so then they go to this orphanage to try to like help Santa out but then the bad Santa finds out that there's this big donation being made to this orphanage and so then he goes to the orphanage to try to steal the money that is being donated to them and then the Bratz babies end up like stopping him and saving the day like sort of by chance and this movie really could have just been 30 minutes long like the fact that it's an hour and 10 minutes just baffles me I mean I'll be honest I did watch it at 1.5 speed so I technically did only spend like 30 minutes watching it but I still feel like it was a waste of time I just don't understand why this is the plot line they decided to go with. Like out of all of the Christmas movies you could rip off, you decided to rip off the R-rated one and you gave it to the Babies franchise? Like that's just so weird to me. And then there's the fact that the Bratz are hardly even in this movie. I just, I don't know. I apologize if this movie is super nostalgic for you and so you hold it very close to your heart, but it just personally wasn't for me and so it's at the bottom. Shoplifting. Gia. Disgrace. You've gone bad at such an early age? Where's your mom? Wait till I tell her what you did. Next up we have Bratz Super Babies and I went to explain to my roommate the other day why I did not like this movie and then I only had to say the title and they understood so <laughs> there's that. So Bratz Super Babies is about these potato aliens who have been observing the Bratz babies and how they get taken care of by Jade's grandma and so they decide that they want to become babies so that they can also be taken care of by Jade's grandma and not have to do anything. It's like they have their own personal servant sort of thing. <laughs> The Bratz also get superpowers at one point, so they're doing that for a bit, but like the main conflict of this movie is that these aliens are like trying to take over their lives. And I'm just gonna be completely honest, every single aspect of this movie irritated me. The babies were annoying, the aliens were a hideous sight to look at, and they also just were not very smart overall. The grandma was just completely useless, and also the sight of lipstick on these babies at times was just not very pleasant. And then I'm also just very confused as to where their pets came from whenever it was bedtime. Like they would just fly in through the window whenever it was like time to lay down and I'm just like, I don't understand. Where did they come from? <laughs> I'd say the only saving grace in this movie is the fact that one of the aliens is voiced by Preminger's evil poodle from The Princess and the Pauper, and he's actually in a few of the other Bratz movies as well, and I just enjoyed his voice actor. He was a lot of fun. But yeah, overall, I think it's safe to say that I did not enjoy this movie, and again, I'm sorry if it's your favorite and I'm being a little bit mean towards it, but I just, I just didn't like it. Enjoy your stay, ladies. Brrr. 
Coming in at number 13, we have Bratz Pampered Pets. In this movie, the girls meet this woman who saves animals from this one shelter, and then she keeps them at her house until they have room at the no-kill shelter. But then her evil neighbor wants her property, and so he tries to get her evicted for not following code on how many pets you can have. And this movie honestly wasn't that bad. It just didn't really feel like a Bratz movie to me, if that makes sense. Like, there wasn't really any talks about fashion. There was no school drama, no boy drama. And so, yeah, it just didn't really fit right to me, if that makes sense. And it was also sort of like the Bratz Baby's Christmas movie, where, like, the Bratz weren't even really the main Main characters of the story like it was this lady who we've never met before who was like doing her best bless her but I just feel like if I'm watching a Bratz movie like I want to hear about the Bratz you know <laughs> who are you looking for onion guy I am not an onion so number 12, we have the Bratz Kids of Fairy Tales, and I feel like now we're getting into the movies that like I didn't hate. Basically in this one, the Bratz Kids are sent to this fairy tale realm, and then they all have to complete a fairy tale story so that they can be sent back home. I mean, to be honest, this movie was just kind of filled with the girls making a mess of things and complaining and then only end up finishing their stories by chance, but I did still really appreciate the message of it. Just the whole idea that something can seem a lot simpler on the surface and that it's easy to sort of nitpick something when you're not like in the situation and that you kind of have to walk in someone's shoes to really understand, and then also just the whole concept Concept that people are often way too hard on fairy tales in general was also handled pretty well here but just overall the movie just didn't really pique my interest and so that's why it is a bit farther back on the list and then part of me also feels like they didn't actually include any of the good parts of the fairy tales and I also feel like it was a very big missed opportunity for them not to use the twins as the evil stepsisters and I don't know about the actual Snow White story I'm really only familiar with the Disney one but as far as my memory serves I don't think that the doors were like forcing her to cook and clean like she just like did it and they were like oh I like that uh, but maybe I'm wrong I don't know I did really appreciate the boy band thing though. I thought that that was funny and so yeah I don't know all in all I feel like the concept of this movie was pretty good, but I just didn't love the execution Balls are falling from the ceiling Balls all right, so next up we've got Bratz Babies the movie. So the Bratz are babies in this one again. Um, and they're all at mall daycare. And then one of the babies who isn't even in like the core four of the Bratz, she was just like introduced in this movie and then we never saw her again as far as the movies are concerned. Um, but she brings a puppy to daycare and then the puppy gets loose. And so then they go and try to find the puppy, but then it's being held captive by this bully who says he'll only give it back for $50. And so then they try to find ways to get the money, one of which included having a dog washing station, which like is beyond me as to what adult would pay a toddler to wash their dog, but they did that for a bit. But then they ultimately ended up competing in this karaoke contest, which is what the bully suggested in the first place. Which speaking of, this bully really kept bringing up this karaoke contest to the point where I was just like, dude, if you want her to sing, like just say so, like give her a dog back and just like, maybe if you ask nicely, she'll sing in the contest, like calm down. <laughs> So they win the contest, but then it doesn't even matter because they ended up standing up to the bully in the end and then the dog peed on him and he ran away. So yeah, this is a great ending. <laughs> And while I didn't hate this movie, I will admit that it was quite odd to see the girls act the same way that they did in this movie as when they were teenagers. There was also just way too many song montages in this movie, which speaking of the intro song was also just way too long. Although I did find it quite funny how he spent like five minutes introing the Bratz babies and going over their names just to cut to these two twins who we've never heard of before. I also like how this movie had hand-drawn animation because most of the animation in the Bratz cinematic universe is pretty horrendous to say the least. And so yeah, that was nice. Before I move on though, I just got to mention the thing with their outfits at the end of this movie because it really just rubbed me the wrong way. Basically, they were looking for something to wear for the karaoke contest and one of the girls literally says that she wants something that's just smoking and stuff and I'm just like, you're toddlers, this is weird, I'm uncomfortable, I did not like that. Uh, but yeah, that's Bratz Babies the movie, let's move on. I can't even see myself! Make space, people! I can't see myself! So next up we have the Bratz Kids Sleepover Adventures which could also alternatively be titled the Bratz Kids Halloween Special because it does that thing that a lot of the Disney Channel Halloween episodes do where they all just take turns telling scary stories. I feel like this movie had a really strong start like the fact that it was made up of all these smaller stories I feel like really helps the pacing of it but then by the time we were at like the final two stories I was really just done with this movie. It's another one that I feel like could have easily been 40 minutes instead of 60 and I feel like I would have liked it a lot better if it was. Also the girls were being really mean in this one like their one friend didn't want to tell stories anymore because she was getting too scared but they just kept pushing her and being like well Jade hasn't told her story yet and I'm just like stop. Or I guess she could have just like gone to bed if she didn't want to take part in it anymore, but just, I don't know, it didn't sit right with me. This was also the first Bratz Kids movie that I watched because it's the first one that they made, but I just felt in terms of like the character design, I almost preferred them as kids than when they were teenagers. I don't know, I just felt like they were a little bit more pleasant to look at, if that makes sense. But yeah, that's Bratz Kids uh, Sleepover Adventures. Let's move on to number nine. Just give it to her! Get away! 
So at number nine, we have Desert Jewels, which is a sequel to an earlier Bratz movie, Genie Magic. It's basically about this evil guy who kidnaps Katya, who is the former genie from Genie Magic. And so he steals her and her family's carpet and then takes them on this quest to find this genie lamp. And so the Bratz girls are trying to catch up to him to save their friend. It's like very Indiana Jones-esque, I assume. I've actually never seen Indiana Jones, but it's like a desert adventure sort of road trip movie. I really liked how we got more of a backstory for Katya in this movie because that was one of my main complaints for Genie Magic, just that we were left with so many unanswered questions and so it was nice to see us actually get those answers with this movie but the main reason why this one is second lowest I believe in terms of like the main Bratz movies is just because I wasn't that invested in the plot and I found it to be a little bit slow. Wait a sec Mandy what's your name? Sh Sheridan. Is this your corn? So I think that this one might be a little bit of an unpopular opinion because from what I saw it does seem to be a pretty big fan favorite but um it's not mine. At number eight we have Passion 4, number four Fashion Diamonds with a Z of course. Basically there's this reality show competition going on between the Bratz magazine and the BU magazine which is their rival and also a parody to Barbie. So they're going on this road trip collecting contestants to compete in this final fashion show competition in New York. And similarly to Desert Jewels I just didn't find myself as invested in the plot in comparison to some of the other Bratz movies. I'm also also not too sure what kind of parents would let four teenage girls go on a road trip across the country in a giant transport truck, but um, to each their own. The voice of Penelope from Rapunzel is also in this movie, so that's fun. She's also in a few of the other Bratz movies, but I'm pointing it out now. And I gotta say, I liked how this movie was focused on the magazines again, because I felt like ever since Rock Angels, they kind of like forgot about the magazine's existence, and so it was nice to see it brought back up again. There's also this whole thing where they give like this country girl a makeover, and I gotta be honest, I liked her look a lot better before. Oh, also at the end of the movie, she like hops in her car with her ice skate still on and I thought that that was really funny. All in all, I'll just say that I think that if the guys were in this movie, I would definitely like it a lot better. Oh well. Looks like it's just you and me. I don't have a problem with that. Next up we have Bratz Girls Really Rock, which is basically Camp Rock but Bratz, and I just think it's really funny that both the Barbie franchise and the Bratz franchise have a Camp Rock-esque movie. This one's basically about the girls going to a performing arts camp and then competing in a final showcase, so <laughs> yeah, it's just Camp Rock. Oh, there was also this romantic subplot with Dylan and this one dancer girl named Anna, which I thought was really cute, but then we never heard from it again in any of the other movies, although I was kind of expecting that to happen from the moment her character was introduced. This movie also does that thing where it's kind of like split into two halves, like the first part of this movie they're just really focused on like being at camp and just having a good time and the second half of the movie the love story really kicks in and all of the girls become really invested in like what they're going to be doing for the final showcase and become really competitive with one another and I just feel like we could have really cut down the first half of this movie to make room for the second half because that was the half that I really cared about. This is also the longest Bratz movie in terms of the animated ones and I just feel like that's its biggest fault like we really didn't need that extra 20 minutes. It's also a musical which I don't know you guys know how much I love musicals but I just didn't really care for the musical element elements in this movie. Also the first song in this movie was basically what time is it and I was just like Bratz that's the wrong movie come on what are you doing? <laughs> but we did get to hear Dylan sing in this movie and that was fun. I feel like his voice kind of reminded me of Jesse McCartney which was interesting. I also wrote down in my notes not this ship being the best developed in the series and that was in reference to Anna and Dylan and I stand by that like why this random ship in this one movie gets the best story arc I do not know but they're probably my favorite Bratz ship. They'd be number one. Cameron and Chloe would probably be a close second. Um, but yeah, that's this movie. I thought it was cute. So it's number six, I think. <laughs> Let's move on. He's asking you on a date. Coming in at number six, we have Genie Magic. I mentioned this one earlier because it did receive a sequel, but it's basically about this girl and her dad who are being held captive by this bad guy who wants to take over the world. And so she is a genie. I forgot to mention that. <laughs> But that's why she's being held captive. But then she escapes and then meets the brats and then they become friends and she's just happy to be a normal teen. And then obviously plot ensues and then they have to go stop the bad guy from taking over the world. And like I said earlier, this movie left me with a lot of questions that for the most part got answered in the sequel, but I still wanted to talk about them because I don't know, I wrote them down. <laughs> so first of all, why is this girl a genie? Where do her powers come from? Is this dude actually her dad or just some guy who found her lamp? I mean, spoiler alert for Desert Jewels, I think he actually is her dad. <laughs> Especially now knowing that he is also a genie, like it's a genetic thing, which is interesting, I guess. I also was curious as to like if this girl was actually a teenager or if that was just like the magical form that she chose. Like, I don't know, I'm just surprised that genies can age. 
um, but I guess they can in the Bratz universe, which is cool. Also, where's Cameron? This is a note that I wrote down for like every movie after this one because he just kind of disappears, which is super disappointing to me because I really wanted to see more Chloe and Cameron content, but we didn't get that and it made me sad. Also, the beginning of this movie was really odd to me because like I assume they were supposed to be singing, but their lips weren't moving and so it just looks like they were being like sexy dancers on stage and I'm just like, I don't know, you're teenagers, like I'm uncomfortable. I also wrote down while watching this movie that Zoe's voice was getting too much for me and that was a reference to the fact that the voice of Jade in a lot of these movies is voiced by the same girl that voices Zoe from The Proud Family and that was just messing with my brain. Also they used the character design of Duke from Rock Angels as the weatherman in this movie and that just made me laugh. I also just wanted to point out that I really liked Katya's character. I thought that she was really cool. She had tattoos, a romantic subplot with this guy named Bryce. She could also tell the future, which I'm just so curious about. Like, can all genies tell the future or was that just her? Who knows? On the more negative side of things, there was this one homeless person comment that was on the yike side of things, if you ask me. You mean you ran away from home? You're gonna be a homeless person with no shower and no makeup and you'll just get smellier and smellier until he's so your dad. So yeah, I feel like this movie is pretty fun and in terms of like doll line genie movies, it's probably my favorite. And you might be thinking, is there really that many doll line genie movies? And yeah, probably not. I just got Monster High on the brain. Sing something. Open eyes, I can see what's in front of me. So we have reached the live action movie and I don't know why but for some reason I assumed that this movie would be number one on this list or at least be a little bit higher than it ended up being. But I guess that just goes to show either how not that great this movie is or how good some of the animated Bratz movies are. I'll let you guys be the judge of that one. And so this movie is about cliques, I guess. You've got the main sort of popular girl who's played by Chelsea Kane and she really wants the whole school to be organized into like very specific friend groups for a reason that's never really explained. I assume it's just so that she can like reign supreme over all of them. But the Bratz girls are friends and they want to hang out with each other, at least they do, for like a day until they find their own cliques and then abandon one another for two years. Which I feel like I could have gotten more on board with if these interests that these girls had in this movie were more relevant in the other movies, but they weren't. Like maybe they have these interests in the doll line or in the TV show, but as far as the movies were concerned, they kind of come out of nowhere. But yeah, they all become friends again after being forced together in detention and then some other stuff happens and then there's a talent show at the end of the movie. And I remember watching this movie when it came out and while that was like 13 years ago, I'm still very surprised that I could not remember remember a thing that happened in this movie. The only thing I did remember was when she calls them brats, but even that scene itself like wasn't how my brain remembered it, which was really weird. I just feel like this movie felt so superficial, like it's what someone who hasn't been to high school in years thinks that teenagers act like, which I know is big coming from someone who's into DCOMs, but I feel like there was just something about this movie that was missing. Like while DCOMs can be unrealistic, this one just felt so out of touch. I will say that the cast was good though. Like I said, you got Chelsea Kane, Janelle Parrish, Annalise Vanderpool, Nina from House of Anubis and Casey's dad from Casey Undercover who I must say does not age. Something else I really didn't like though was the portrayal of the guys in this movie. Like I don't even think Dylan and Cameron were friends which was weird. Also the Cameron I know would never be friends with or dating. I don't know their relationship was super unclear um but uh with Meredith and her friend group he would not be associated with them whatsoever. He'd be hanging out with Dylan. I don't know they were buds. And then there was the fact that Dylan was deaf in this movie which just left me really confused because well first of all the portrayal of him being deaf was just so bad. They acted like he could understand everything by lip reading which is just so not accurate at all and then also nobody made an attempt to even learn ASL which just made me sad. And then him and Yasmin being a thing was so weird to me which again I don't know if this is different in maybe the show or the doll line but in the movies Yasmin really had no interest in him and I don't think he had interest in her either. I don't know I feel like he was more of like a player in the movies and just yeah, not like he is in this movie. I really was quite surprised while watching this movie because I remember liking it as a kid or at least thinking that it was okay, but I really just, I don't know, I didn't think it was as good this time around and I honestly didn't really know where to put it on this list. So I would be really curious to know how you guys feel about this movie in the comments down below. So yeah, let me know. And I don't know, hopefully I don't regret this placement later on, but let's move on to number four. Reality check, this is moving way too fast for me. I so cannot handle it. Wait, I got a plan. Stop the planet, I'm getting off. So next up we have Bratz Go to Paris the movie which is actually a compilation of three of the TV episodes but I included it because it's on the wiki and I already watched it and also it makes this list 15 movies so 
that's why it's here. Basically, over in Paris, someone has been poisoning all of these fashion models, and so the Bratz girls get recruited to go over to Paris undercover and try to figure out who's been poisoning these models and put a stop to it. To be honest, this movie just really reminded me of Rock Angels, which is a movie I have pretty high up on my list, and so that's what gave this movie a little bit of a bump. I just feel like this one is a true Bratz movie. Like, we're going to Paris, it's about fashion, the boys are there, the classic Barbie parodies are there too, and just overall, it's a good time. I think I might have zoned out for the entirety of the second episode, but I did really enjoy the first and the third. Also, the bone thing would definitely have scarred me as a kid, but overall, it was a fun time. I enjoyed it. Hey! All right, so Fashion Pixies. I was very pleasantly surprised by this one. To really simplify the plot, you basically have this group of like evil fairies who want to take over the human world, and so the brats got to put a stop to that. I will admit that I was pretty confused for probably the entirety of the first half of this movie. Like, I just feel like the exposition wasn't the greatest. Like, there were so many times where I was just like, I'm sorry, what is happening? Things obviously came together by the end of the movie, but there was just such a good chunk of it where I just felt so lost, but I also feel like that just made me like it even more. Dylan also had a love interest in this movie, which I completely forgot about till now because we never heard from her again, but it was cute in the moment. I also wrote down, well, that's a strange and dark backstory, and I feel like that's just a great way to summarize this movie overall. I also just wanted to give a little shout out to that one scene where the girls are seeing the pixie world for the first time by using these like special glasses and just the amount of times that they put them back on and took them off was just hilarious to me. Also this is a slight spoiler so if you don't want the ending of Bratz Fashion Pixies to be spoiled for you, um, you have been warned. But basically at the end of the movie they save this one girl's mom and so she comes back to life in her pixie form but her pixie form is just a Bratz doll and so at first I was very confused as to like why their mother is a teenager um, but then I understood that it was her pixie form but it was still very odd. I feel like the main reason why I really enjoyed this one is just because I liked the fantasy elements of it. It really reminded me of that book series I mentioned earlier called The Folk of the Air, which if you want to listen to, you could on Audible with my code in the description. <laughs> but yeah, that is Fashion Pixie, so let's move on to number two. Not nearly as beautiful as you, my pretty princess. So based on the amount of times that I've mentioned this movie in this video already, I think it comes to nobody's surprise that I would have Rock Angels as number two. This movie is about the girls starting a magazine called, that's right, you guessed it, The Bratz Magazine. Um, and so then they end up going to London to get content for the magazine. But then meanwhile, you have this rival magazine called The BU Magazine, which I mentioned earlier is kind of like a parody to Barbie. Which, yeah, I don't know. I personally found it to be a little bit untasteful, like just because you're having success right now, like maybe don't gloat about it. And it is quite funny when you look at where Barbie is today in comparison to where Bratz is today. But yeah, that's all I'll say on that. There was also this whole side plot with Chloe who was dating this Duke who ended up being a jerk, but it probably ended up being one of my favorite plot lines from the movie. Also, I gotta say, I love the twins. I thought that they were really fun characters, really good rivals to the Bratz dolls but their sound effects at times made me want to turn off the TV and never come back to these movies ever again. <laughs> I also love how at the start of my notes it says that the nose job joke made me laugh and then by the end of my notes it says I'm getting pretty sick of this nose job joke and I feel like that's pretty accurate. And this was also the first one that I watched with that CGI animation and all I wrote down was that it made them look older, less likable, and also kind of hideous and I think I stand by that still. And then just as a side note because this nickname was used a lot in this movie, I think if anyone ever called me pretty princess I would probably vomit on the spot. Alright, so at number one we have Bratz, Starin, and Stylin, and I think that this one might be a little bit of an unpopular opinion because as far as my research went, this one is not a fan favorite, but it's my favorite, and that's what matters here on Kate Loves Disney. <laughs> this movie is just everything I feel like a Bratz movie should be. Like, they're in high school, they've got this assignment on self-expression coming up by the end of the week, but it's also prom week, so stress levels are high. And then there was also this whole thing where, like, someone was writing all of their secrets in the school paper, and so they had to figure out who that was, and I really liked the reveal. I thought that that plotline was done pretty well, and so, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I just really liked this movie. I thought that it was really cute and genuine. The animation was also really nice and nostalgic, even though I've never seen this movie in my life. It sort of gave me Polly World meets the Barbie Diaries vibes, if that makes sense. There was also this part where Chloe crashes her car because she swerves for a skunk, and I feel like this is a very good example as to why you're not supposed to break for small animals. Anyone who's taken driver's training, at least in Canada, should know this. Um, I mean, I definitely do break for them, but I check my mirrors first, which is what you're supposed to do. Chloe, I'm looking at you. I also loved how after this accident that left them stranded in the woods, they were more concerned about their prom transportation than the fact that they are now stranded and almost died. The only complaint I have about this movie is the whole plotline with Jade losing her fashion sense. Like, she kept choosing these really cool and unique outfits for prom, and all of her friends kept being like, oh no, you've lost your touch. Like, that is way too out there for prom. And I'm like, 
what are you doing? Just be nice and supportive. Like she was making these really cool choices and I was like here for it. And then she ends up wearing this really boring dress to prom and all of her friends are like, wow, your sense of fashion is back. And I'm like, no, it's not. Her other choices were so much better. This was also the only movie that gave us real Cameron and Chloe development besides the live action one. And so, yeah, I don't know. I thought that they were cute. I liked them and just, yeah, like I said, overall, I feel like this movie was really genuine and just felt to me like what a Bratz movie should be. Like they're in high school, there's boy drama, prom drama, school drama in general. And it just, I don't know, it seemed right to me. So that is why Star and Stylin is my favorite Bratz movie. But let me know down below which movie is your favorite or if you have any other memories with Bratz that you want to share, leave that in the comments down below. Anyways, Kater Tatsa is all I have to say for today. I hope you'll have a wonderful day and I'll talk to you very, very soon.